Hi, welcome back to my channel according to Kat. If you're new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. Also, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you like DIYs on a budget, anything using Dollar Tree products, things from the thrift store, and lately, things from yard sales. It's amazing stuff. So I can't wait to share that with you. And I cannot wait to upcycle them, trash to treasure. Also, um, if you hit the bell icon, you will be notified every time I upload a new video. So what are we going to be making today? Okay, so today we're going to be making this Adventure Arrow Wood Sign. I used mostly Dollar Tree products and I made it for my son's bedroom. I love how rustic it looks and if you want to learn how to make this DIY, keep on watching. If you would like to know what supplies I've used, please check out the description box below. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, so let's figure out what supplies we'll need for this DIY. So the first thing you're going to need are those arrows you get at the Dollar Tree. You need some Waverly chalk paint in white. I get mine at Walmart. Those arrows you can find, well, I found mine over by where the wreaths are. Um, and they're like a metal like a tin and they are sticky on one side. Okay, so I painted them white with my Waverly chalk paint and I'm putting them aside to dry. This piece of wood I got for 25 cents at my Habitat for Humanity uh, Restore, which I love that store. So right now I am getting it ready for some stain and smoothing out the rough edges. I'm actually going around the sides to kind of round them out a bit. And I'm just kind of feeling to see how smooth it is. I'm using my Waverly Antique Wax as a stain. Um, so I was debating if I wanted to leave it this dark as I am brushing it on pretty generously. But then I decided to wipe some of it off to get a lighter color since most of the, um, the wood in my son's bedroom is more of like an oak color. So I thought it would look a little better being that distressed, more of that oak look even though I did like the dark, looked really nice like that too. Now you can see a lot of the wood grain and I love the way this looks as well. And you can see a lot of those imperfections, which I love. Now you need three of these wooden cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. And I'm kind of just roughing these up. I almost had it like, it almost had like a glazed look to it. So I wasn't sure how it was gonna take the stain. So I just wanted to rough it up a bit. So I am brushing on the Waverly Wax in Antique again the same way I did the two by four. So I am just getting my edges cause you will see that. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Just take my rag and wipe off any excess. So at this point I wanted to darken the edges a bit so it looked more weathered toward the center. This is the second one I'm working on the same technique I will use on the second and third. So now I'm going to go back and darken my edges again and pull that through. Okay, so my next step is, oh here's number three, my next step is I'm going to put my second coat on my arrows. I left them right on the, the paper they were stuck to until I was ready to glue them on. I just left them right on there. So I didn't like how it looked so striated, like it had those stripes, those brush strokes. So I went back with my, first with a paper towel, and then I just said, well, forget that, that's silly. So I went back with my paintbrush and I kind of stippled it. Then I thought, oh, you know what? It would look really cool if it had like, kind of like a rust look around the edges. So I got these from the dollar zone. Okay. So one is a sparkling champagne and the other one was like a iced cappuccino or something like that. I used the sparkling champagne first because I was like, I'll start light and then go darker if I want to. I started putting it on. I couldn't really see it. So I went for the darker one. 
I started putting it on thinking, okay, this doesn't look too bad, but I'm not getting a thick enough color. So I get my paintbrush thinking this is going to be a better technique. And I start brushing on some of the Waverly antique uh, wax thinking, okay. And then I looked at it. I'm like, oh no, I don't like the way that looks at all because now it doesn't stand out from the wood. So I go back to painting it white. Yep. We live, we learn, right? I did not like it at all. So I'm going back and stippling on the white. I'm measuring where I want to put the middle letter. So I measured it out and I found the center and that is where I'm going to put the N. That will be the center letter and there'll be four letters to the right and four letters to the left. So I'm putting that on and I am going to use my pencil to stencil in each of these letters that spell out adventure. So I do my N and then I'm going to do T-U-R-E and then I'll go back the other way and go all the way up to the A. So I have this Sharpie paint pen in white. It is the thick, um, thick point. I guess it's medium point. At first I was like, oh my gosh, this is so easy to use. This is going to be awesome. Um, I have used it once before, but only for something small. So it was going on just flowing so nicely. And it might have been by my fourth letter. I think it was the E because the E gave me both problems, both directions when I outlined it and when I started coloring them in. Um, it just didn't flow the same. I don't know what happened. I did the same exact thing and holding and depressing the top and shaking it the certain way, followed the directions, and then it just stopped working as smoothly as it did before. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll let it rest for a little bit and then I'll go back and fill in each of those letters. But you're going to see that at first it started really great. Like it just, I colored in the A, um, and it just went on great. I colored in the D and the V and look at, it's just going on so smoothly. And then I get to that E, you see that E there? Do you notice how it looks? Like it's like, I'm, I'm ha every time I color in, it's almost taking some of that white paint away. So I'm not happy. So E N T U R E looks horrible. Okay. So I'm taking off those arrows and I am sanding them down a little bit with some, sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. So I decide to go back over the E and the R and the U and the T, all those letters that I was having trouble with thinking, okay, now it's going to go on smoother. Well, it doesn't. So I kind of just put it to the side. I don't even want to deal with it at that point. And I decide to glue on the arrows with my hot glue. Now watch what happens here. Because those arrows are so light, like feather light. So I put it on and I'm kind of like pushing it down into place. Look at this. It's not even nothing at all. It not, it didn't stick at all. So I just pulled off the hot glue, came off super easy. And I used my E6000. <laughs> that looks like a hot mess. I put the E6000 on the back of the arrow and I just place it on and I leave it alone at that point because I realize um, I have nothing that's going to hold it instantly. The E6000 will hold it permanently though. So I do the same thing with the other arrows. Now remember you're going to put one up and two down. So when you put on the hook or the, the hook that's going to hang on the hook, <laughs> you got, you have to make sure that it is in the right direction. You are putting the hook on the right side and I'll show you what I mean later. So again, a little tip, use some Vaseline on the tip of the E6000. It will help you unscrew the cap next time. All right. So that's what it looks like. I love the way it looks and here's the adventure sign. And I see that my letters look horrible. So I decide to get a small paintbrush that is pretty, it's not stiff, but it, it, 
it's not flimsy let's put it that way and I use my Waverly chalk paint in white and I go through each of the letters to brighten those up and to get a better coating and I think they look great I don't make them absolutely perfect because I know I'm going to go back and rough them up with some sandpaper um, so I, I didn't worry about making them perfect I just wanted to brighten them up with some thicker paint all right and I'm happy the way this looks it's exactly what I wanted and again I don't mind that it looks rustic I think it adds to the appeal almost like this sign was in the woods somewhere and you came upon it that's what I wanted okay so I am using this sandpaper from the Dollar Tree that's in that packet and I don't love it I wish I would have used my block from the Dollar Tree it almost made like some black striations on there but it's fine like I said it looks weathered I'm taking my Waverly antique wax and I'm brushing it on the letters and I hate it so I go back and with a damp um, paper towel and I wipe it off it was too dark on that white and I didn't like the way it looked so I took some of that off all right so the next thing I'm doing is oh I go back and I'm trying to rough it up a little more um, and it's okay. I, I mean, I like it. In the end, I love how the whole thing looks. I think I go back with a little wet to take some of that off as well, because I don't remember seeing all that, like that red black residue on there. So I'm taking the block and I am just um, weathering down the edges a bit to the arrow signs, the wood arrows, because I just liked the way that looked and I thought it aged that a little more because I liked how aged the adventure sign looked, but the arrows were now looking a little perfect. So I wanted to distress the sides of that a little more. And I think it did a really good job. I do like these sanding blocks from the Dollar Tree. I like these blocks much better than I like the sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. And you can get the block in uh, medium grit and I guess light grit so there we go I, these are from the Dollar Tree they are in a kit right here it's 513 pieces and it has nails and screws and these little hooks so that's a great buy so I have I use three of those and I'm going to insert them into the adventure board and I'm just marking up where I'm going to put those hooks. And basically, just where those arrows pointed, that's where I put my little dot. I thought it would be easier just to do it this way. Um, and I lined it up on my grid to make it as even as I could. So I was having trouble putting those hooks in. I couldn't get them in. So I decided to use one of those little um, nails and just kind of started myself with a little hole. Once I did that, these hooks went right in. So that was a little tip for you. Um, the first one, I, I did the nail in a little far. So I learned for the second and third not to go in that far, and it still worked at just as good. So you'll see on my next one, I didn't need to pull it out with the back of the hammer. So, so I just keep twisting until it's tight, and I had the hook facing forward. And I'm going to do that with the next one. So I take that same nail very thin nail very thin and I'm going to hammer that in just a little bit enough that I can take it out with my fingers so not too far at all and I take that little eye hook I don't know if is this still called an eye hook if it's opened I'm not sure because I think an eye hook is completely enclosed not quite sure well I'm going to take this gold hook and I'm going to screw it in and I actually use my flat nose pliers to help me at the last part of it where it was getting a little hard to turn. This made it much easier. And for the third hole, so I can screw in the last hook. And again, this was really easy once I put those holes in. But when I first did it without those little holes, I was going nowhere. I just felt like it was like screwing right on top and it wouldn't insert. And I, I'm not very strong, so I thought... Yeah, I'm never going to get this, but that, those made it so much easier, those little nails. So I love the way this looks. I love it already, how it's hanging. 
down like that. And now I'm going to put on how we're going to hang the arrow signs. Now these I got from the back of some of the frames I've used recently. I save everything because I never know when I'm going to use it. If you do not have them, you can use um, like from soda cans, the little tab and you could paint it black or gold or whatever and just put them on like that and you wouldn't even know. But I'm going to use what I have because I had these out. But I thought the soda tab was a free way to have a hook, you know, if you don't have the back of some frames, the hangers. So I am taking a push pin, like um, a tack from that kit that I got, that 513 piece kit from the Dollar Tree. There are gold tacks in there. And these little hooks have a hole at the bottom so I inserted that into the hole and then you know push that right into the back of the wooden uh, plaque. I did all three. Make sure you do um, the one in the middle that the arrow is facing down and the other two I faced up. Okay so now I think I go back and I'm just um, Taking some that uh, some of the antique wax and kind of darkening up the edges, I thought I would like the way that looked. And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to hang it. So I took some of the floral wire because I could not find my other wire. Um, this worked fine for now. If I need to replace it with some other wire from the Dollar Tree, I will, the heavy duty wire. So I tie it around my fingers just to get like a little like circle formation. And then I take the edge of it and I kind of just tie it around and make it tight. I just want some like like a big area that I can use my staple gun for. This works for me. You could do it any way you want. So I staple gun that little circle on about three times. I think I do go back for a fourth time later on, but I do it three times. And then I take my hot glue and just to reinforce it a bit, I will put some hot glue on there so it kind of isn't going anywhere. So I pull it as taut as I can because I don't want it hanging up over the sign. I want it to hide behind the sign. And then I take that piece, I twirl it around my finger again and use my flat nose pliers to kind of scrunch in the end of it. I am hot gluing it and staple gunning it again the three times. Make sure you staple first and hot glue second. And you can see it's a pretty taut wire. Um, if you want to put a nautical rope hanging from the top as a way to hang it, that's fine. I didn't want to see anything. I don't know why. I just thought I liked the clean look of it um, and so that the sign stands out more than the nautical rope. So this is what it looks like. I love this. So it's all ready to finish up. That's that. I'm giving you my thumbs up. I'm happy. Here's the final product. I absolutely, this again, might be one of my favorite DIYs. I do love some of the nautical pieces I've done recently, but this I just love. I think I love using wood and making wood signs. I think this is my favorite thing to do as far as DIYs. So tell me in the comments below, what is your favorite type of DIY to do? Do you love doing wreaths? Do you love doing, um, upcycles? Do you love doing wood signs? What's your favorite type of DIYs to do? I love to learn more about you guys. So let me know in the comments below. And I just want to thank everyone for making it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps my channel. If you want to watch more DIYs on a budget, remember to subscribe. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And one of my new videos coming up will be a sign, a wooden sign for a girl's room. So girls, I didn't forget about you. I just want to say thank you, everyone. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.